Yo, what's going on, True Fam? Welcome back to the channel. It's White Shadow, and as promised, guys, the stream PC is done. So we're gonna go through all of the specs and everything that's in this bad boy. Some of the upgrades that I've done since I've had this on hand and put it through all of the testing and everything. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, guys, so today, guys, we're going to be going over the dedicated stream PC. Now, we've had a couple different videos pertaining to this exact PC, and I want to go over all of the details of this thing because it's truly a monster, and we got it in underneath that $1,000 mark. And I'm going to show you guys the different options that you can throw into a dedicated stream build. So in case you wanted to kind of cheapen it up a little bit and put it into a price point for yourself, you can do so because there's a load of new tech out on the market that you can take advantage of today. So let's go ahead and jump into all of the specs and details and uh, kind of what went into building this bad boy. So starting with the processor, the processor of this is actually a Ryzen 7 1700. I took the Ryzen 7 1700 from my actual gaming rig, threw it in here because it's roughly the same price as the 2600 that I kind of transposed into the gaming PC. The other cool thing to the 1700 is it comes with its own CPU cooler that you can throw in and you don't even, that deletes at $30 immediately. So you would never need to go out and purchase a separate CPU cooler unless you decided to overclock, which I don't recommend doing in a dedicated stream rig. Just let it run at its base speed and it's gonna do its thing. It's just handling the encoding. You don't really have to worry about anything else. So the RAM we actually used for this was the Corsair Vengeance LPX. That memory is the one that was also in my gaming rib. I repurposed it. I actually took the Trident Z RGB that was supplied by a community member, Advanced Tech or ADV Dan, if you guys know him in Discord, put that in the gaming rig and put the 3000 megahertz 16 gigabyte kit in here. 3000 megahertz is perfect for a streaming rig and Ryzen really utilizes all of that extra memory speed. So 3000 megahertz really helped make this build a lot better. The Trident Z went to the gaming rig and I'm now pumping out some juicy frames on there with the RTX 2070 and the 2600. So this one is taking control of 3000 megahertz RAM. The gaming PC is taking control of a 3200 megahertz RAM. So that 200 megahertz clock speed isn't gonna make that big of a difference, but for gaming, you want the most out of that. So I threw it in that other system. This RAM does just fine here. I've never had a hiccup with it. So the motherboard I chose for this, this was kind of the hard one for me because I needed at least two PCIe slots that can handle a capture card and a graphics card. So I had to go micro ATX instead of going mini ITX because if you guys know anything about mini ITX, they only have one PCIe slot. So I needed two. So we went micro ATX and we went with the ASUS B450 Tough Gaming Edition. This is a micro ATX board and it's awesome. This is one of my favorite boards I have personally ever used in any build. Looks great, built great in hand. It was a very good, solid build quality to it. And the BIOS on this thing is fantastic. Installing all of the components felt good. And it was just a nice board to use. I mean, it immediately recognized the 1700, booted right up without a hitch. And I didn't really have any issues at all getting this thing up and running. So the CPU cooler I was actually utilizing for this build was this guy. I was using the Arctic Freezer 1 Esports Edition. It was a great cooler. I actually won a Fractal Design competition over the holidays and got a Fractal Design S24 AIO, which is what you already see in here. I kind of upgraded it a little bit. This, this Arctic Freezer cooler kept it well below 40 degrees Celsius while idle and it didn't really ever get over 50 degrees celsius while i was encoding stream now we'll get into the preset i use on this specific rig here in just a second i never once had an issue with the arctic freezer esports edition it would never got loud since i got the fractal design s24 i decided to go with an aio because i like transporting aios a lot better back and forth between my studio at home and the filming studio here so that's why we threw that one in there now for the capture card, I'm using an Elgato HD60 Pro. You guys know there again, Elgato is a great company. They make awesome capture devices and the HD60 Pro is no slouch in that area. Now for the SSD, I am using a 250 gig team group Delta. That is a great little SSD. Read write speeds are very good and 250 gigs is really all you need for a dedicated stream build. I'm not planning on holding a ton of data on this PC 
And the case ob obviously offers expandability on that front. And if I ever want to throw in a dedicated hard drive or another SSD. So going with uh, 250 gigs for now, we may upgrade, we may not in the future. For the power supply, I am using an EVGA NEX650. You can no longer get this power supply. This is one that I had laying around. But the comparable version of this power supply would be a EVGA G2 650 watt. Both of them run right around 80 bucks right now. Super great power supply and EVGA makes some of the most reliable on the market. So the graphics card I actually had in here before I threw the 1080 in and I'll talk about the 1080 here in just a second because I had some issues with it at the beginning of the year. But uh, the graphics card that I did have in here was the ASUS Radeon 7750. It's a one gig, I think it's like a 920 megahertz clock speed on the core. A graphics card and it was just enough to run be able to run two monitors i you really never use a graphics card while encoding a stream it may use a very little of the graphics card but i never once had an issue and i was able to run 1080p 60 fps streams out of this thing with that graphics card installed and still be able to run all of my alerts my overlays all of that stuff the 7750 was a great card for this another option would be to get a gt 710 or a GTX 1030, something like that. Low power graphics cards would do great in dedicated stream builds because you don't need a ton of GPU power unless you do rendering and things of that sort. So that's why I have a 1080 in here because sometimes I do rendering and if my main gaming PC ever goes down, I have a backup GPU here. So that's another good thing to have on hand. But like I said, we'll talk about the 1080 in just a minute because I want to explain some stuff that happened with this particular 1080. Going back to the case, this is a Cooler Master Q300L. Fantastic case, costs about $33 on B&H Photo, Newegg, Amazon, wherever you buy it. I think they, they go up and down. I have seen it go up to 40 bucks here and there, so just keep that in mind. Great case, it's relatively cheap. You can tell when you're taking the PCIe slots out you kind of have to break them out. That's the only thing I didn't like about it. But everything else about this case is fantastic. It's got great airflow. It's got a lot of customizability to it. And it's got a very good build quality. It's actually a steel case with some plastic bits here and there. But it's got really nice filters on the top and front. Uh, mounting the power supply was easy. Mounting the motherboard was easy. So it's a good case. It's a good budget option. And it looks really good. The other cool thing I liked about it was this power button area here. You can actually take that and put it on one of these three cor or four corners here. You can kind of move it around and customize it. And it also fits in my, you guys probably saw in the setup video. I have a little rack that sits next to me on my stream and it slid right in the bottom of that rack out of the way. So I have my gaming PC, streaming PC on the bottom and it never once gives me any trouble sitting back there. Out airflow is great and uh, it's just nice and silent. That's the thing I love about it. So the total for all the parts that I have listed here, that's the graphics card, the 7750, um, going down the list. So the Ryzen 7 was 170, the Asus Tough motherboard was 92, the Corsair Vengeance LPX was right around 125. The Arctic Freezer, if you wanted to pick that up, say you didn't like the one that came with the 1700, that'll run you another $30. Elgato HD60 Pro, you're looking at $170 for that capture card. You can cheapen that up. We're gonna talk about the alternative in just a second. The Team Group SSD, that's gonna run you $50. There again, 250 gigs is perfect for this, 50 bucks. The EVGA G2, 80 bucks that's your power supply i would suggest investing in a decent power supply i wouldn't go anything below the 600 bronze from evga that is another tier one power supply you can usually pick that up for right around 60 something dollars the asus radeon 7750 you can get that for right around 50 bucks i don't know if there's any more left on the market so i would go with like a gt 710 or an nvidia gtx 1030 and of course the cooler master q300l case beautiful case 33 to 40 bucks in there and that whole grand total would come to right around depending on what you guys got these on sale for 800 bucks which the whole goal was to get in under 1100 dollars which is what the dedicated intel streamlabs pcs the mini ones are going for right now i can build a d better dedicated streaming pc for 800 bucks than what intel and streamlabs can do for $1,100. You guys remember, the ones from Streamlabs and Intel are laptop i5s, two cores, four threads of processing power with eight gigs to 16 gigs of RAM, 
And that's it. There's nothing else really on there. They have like a 250 gig SSD. They're in a very small form factor like this big and they have an internal capture card. So $1,100 net you that. Or you can have something awesome like this. Granted, you're gonna have to have the space for this. So I guess if space is a complaint, then go with the other option. Uh, I am going to try building other rigs that are a lot smaller form factor than this throughout the year if we can get sponsors for them. Getting sponsors for PC hardware is very hard, so that's why we kind of had to go to the community and I had to kind of help raise money for this thing. And some of this actually came out of pocket as well, so I used some of my birthday and Christmas money for this rig. But it's super awesome and I love this thing. And I kind of wanted to prove that, hey, it can be done for under 8 hundred dollars now if you wanted to cheapen this thing up a little bit you can cheapen it up on the processor you can go with a ryzen 1600 which you can get for 150 versus 170 you can go with a little bit lesser ram so like a 266 megahertz kit or a 2400 megahertz kit but i don't actually recommend doing that on ryzen but if you wanted to shave off a few bucks you can do that as well with the motherboard you don't necessarily have to have the tough gaming motherboard it's just the best one that i can find on sale at that given time that was reliable so 92 bucks but you can definitely get them for less now it's just during the holidays it was really hard to find parts because everything was selling out but yeah you can do better on the motherboard you can cheapen that up i saw some for around 70 from asrock and even asus uh those were out of stock at the time you can also get some msi boards for that price as well so keep that in mind or if you can find some older b350 motherboards that'll even help because those are a lot cheaper than the b450s the b450 has newer technology now the cpu cooler obviously buying ryzen you don't necessarily need the cpu cooler because they throw those into some of the the wraith coolers they throw those into some of the uh packages but you can get an aftermarket cooler the one i had was 30 bucks you can actually go with a cooler master cooler and it would be like 20 something bucks or less than that but like i said you don't necessarily need one when purchasing a ryzen processor now the other thing you can cheapen up here is the of course the capture card you can always go with an external unit and there are a couple that have come out the uh, pluggable performance nix the pluggable performance nix that is a 99 dollars graphics card that i'm hoping to get my hands on very soon and early reviews are saying that it is very good so i would recommend checking that out if you are going to get a decent capture card for anything like this uh, it is a USB 3.0 capture card. You could go with an Avermedia, Elgato, Magewell, whatever. You can, if you find something on sale, go with it. The other thing you could have cheapened up a little bit if you wanted to would be the power supply. You can go with a bronze unit from EVGA, Corsair, Sasonic. Any of those companies out there will do. As long as it has a good rating, I would recommend checking out the tier ratings for power supplies because you don't want to go under a tier three. Now, moving on to the upgrades that I have done to this actual PC here, I've actually upgraded the GPU to a GTX 1080. And this 1080 is the one that gave me issues at the beginning of the year. Actually, it gave me issues before the year even started. I actually had this 1080 go down on me. I've contacted EVGA, we worked everything out and come to find out it was a BIOS incompatibility with this particular card. For some reason, I passed a nvidia update and it ruined the bios on the card started giving me artifacting and all sorts of issues were ensuing with this card actually ended up overvolting the ryzen 2600 when i was testing it a lot of issues just happened got everything sorted out now got a brand new 2600 in the gaming rig and the gtx 1080 is actually fixed now it's good so we have uh, this all ready to go and um, I am using it in this rig to do rendering and things of that sort. Now, the other upgrade that I mentioned earlier was the CPU cooler. I actually won this CPU cooler. It's a Fractal Design S24. Fantastic AIO for anybody looking for an AIO. They run right around $110 to $120. But I won this through a Fractal Design competition on online. They were running a giveaway, and I won it and got a Vertigear chair alongside of it. And it's actually a fantastic cooler. I love it. It doesn't have all of that RGB flare, which I don't need on my dedicated stream rig. So it kind of fits this whole aesthetic here. Nice and silent operation. Actually have the fans blowing all the way through to the back. So all of the components are getting air spread across them. And I have this one exhaust fan here. 
I may end up doing a quad fan on the front of this case just to have that extra airflow. Great airflow in this case and overall the upgrades that I've done have been a very pleasant surprise in rendering and encoding and all of that fun stuff. So yeah, this is the dedicated stream build for the channel. Um, hope to do more of these, but if you guys want to get something like this, it will run you around 800 bucks with the GPU and the upgraded AIO, you're looking at well above a thousand. It's kind of worth it if you guys want a really good dedicated streaming PC. Just know you don't have to go out and blow a couple thousand dollars on a dedicated stream build like with a GTX 1080 and stuff in it. You can get by with a relatively low power graphics card. You can get by with a six core processor, 16 gigs of RAM. You're gonna, always gonna need 16 no matter how you look at it. But always, always do your research, guys. And if you ever need help, come reach out to me on Discord. I will walk you guys through every step of the way of this process and what it takes to build a PC of this caliber. You can actually get this a lot cheaper. If I were to go with a lesser processor, uh, lesser RAM, lesser graphics card, motherboard, I can get this well above right around 730 bucks. So no matter how you look at it, you can definitely cheapen it up and make it still a great encoding rig. With the rig, the way it sits now, I can encode on the medium to low preset in OBS, and it really churns out the frames and makes everything look super crispy and buttery going back out to Twitch. This is capable of 1080p 60 as well. So if you're into that, all of that stuff, definitely look into building something of this caliber. But fantastic little case, fantastic little build, and I am so happy to be able to do this for you guys on the channel because it's something I've been looking forward to for so long. Dedicated stream build. I'm gonna show you guys the full PC setup as it sits now. Show you guys how to route some um, audio and things of that sort from OBS using the Sound Blaster XG6 very soon. Stay tuned to the channel. If you guys like this video, be sure to give me that thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to see more content like this. If you guys like what you see and you want to follow myself or True Gaming on any of our social medias, guys, be sure to do so. All of those links are in the description below. I'll see you guys on the next one. I got plenty more reviews and fun stuff like this coming to the channel. So stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Why shadow out?